Hey guys, so today's video is going to be on a device that I made that will draw lines on the screen here. So I was running into some issues actually with the screen where it wouldn't let me stack this bottom half of it on top of itself to make a, you know, a fully square screen. So instead I got like this weird 2 to 1 aspect ratio screen. Whatever. Um, anyway, so the screen here has like SR latches that I can turn on and off and hold memory. And I can reset them and then I can set them. And so over here, I know this is a lot, uh, so over here we have a bitmap. So you can basically set one, you could, you could set, you could select which pixel you want to set. So let's say you had a bunch of memory, like RAM, you could hook up the RAM to this and then load in images all, all at once. Or what you can do is you can use the back inputs here and then load in values, uh, X, Y values one at a time. So since tongue is fast enough, we can actually take advantage of loading in X, Y values one at a time. And I built this thing that will draw lines. Sorry about my phone going off. All right. So. What I'll do here is we have a, uh, this is in the form of y equals, uh, y is equal to mx plus b or c or whatever you want to call it. So we have a slope and an intercept. And so the slope is the m and the intercept here is the b. And then we can initialize, start it, and then we can clear our screen and reset it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw in a slope of, uh, here, I know what we'll do. We'll start up pretty high. We'll go up to like 15 and we'll do a slope of, uh, one. So then we'll initialize that. You can see we're, we're up 15 and it initializes the point in there. And so now, when I press start, it's going to draw a slope of one in that direction. I'm going to stop it before it gets to the end. All right. So now what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll go down to eight and we'll do a slope of two. Then we'll initialize it. See it's there. Start. Now we're getting a slope of two. And uh, let's see, we'll go to zero and we'll do a slope of three. But now what we'll do is we'll speed this up to be 500. Set and go. So you see it just speeds right up. And then uh, what happens is it loops. It gets to the top and then we'll keep looping around. So we could draw a bunch of different lines here. Uh, we'll do that. And when this loops, it'll just keep looping on itself like that. Yep, so uh, this can draw some lines. Uh, it can't really utilize all of the horizontal space, as you can see, um, which is kind of a bummer. But yeah, we're able to draw lines. Now I'll show you how it works. Okay, so the way this works is actually pretty simple. So I'm going to clear the screen and we're going to put in a test example of 2x plus 3 because that's pretty nice. All right, so what does this mean, 2x plus 3? Well, when I click initialize, the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to take this plus 3 and it's going to put it at x equals 0, y equals 3. So here's x equals 0 and y equals 3. So it's going to turn on, you know, this, that's that pixel there. Yeah, all, all these pixels, well, this this one pixel here, which is for lights, um, it's going to turn that on. So when I plot this, or when I initialize that, you can see that we're at x equals 0, y equals 3. So that's all that uh, intercept is, is it's just our starting position. And then so our 3 is loaded into a counter here. So this counter is outputting 3 here, and it's actually the inverse of 3. If you can see, we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and if you took the inverse of that, we have 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, and that's actually the 3 that we have because it's getting inverted up here to go in. Okay, so we have, uh, we have a 3 in a counter, 
And then the, now we can increment this counter and make it four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Um, so cool. And then let's, how is that useful to this? Um, well, the reason that's useful is now we can say, all right, we're at three. And now we can increment upwards and plot as we move upwards. So that program counter is what's keeping track of the X or the Y axis. And then we have another program counter keeping track of the X axis right next to it. And that is this program counter right here. So this program counter goes into the X axis decoder and is entering zero right now. And because of that, we're at um, X equals zero and Y equals three, the Y intercept. Then what it does is after you press plot, it it has some delay it does you know it clears that to zero and then a little bit later it plots so then that plotting is how we got that point there so now when we do start and we click that or we, we turn it on it turns this clock on here which will then start making pulses and those pulses come in to uh, they actually come into a mono stable here which then comes into uh, this secondary mono yeah there's a lot of mono stables it's it's a pain in the ass um anyway yeah so it comes into here and um because i have pulse shorteners and lengtheners everywhere here so it comes into here and uh when you turn on that clock this turns on and it checks um if if the counter if the slope counter here uh oh well, i guess i should also say when the initialization happens it sets this counter to one um, so we have the inverse of one right here, just like how that was inverted on the output. We have that here. So this is the inverse of one, which is zero, one, 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 like that. And then down here we have the slope of two that you can see coming in from our user input. So this is an XNOR gate. So that's why it's able to work with inverted inputs like this. And what it does is it says, is our value equal to the bottom? Or are these values equal? And if these values are equal, this will turn off here. Um, but this only turns off on a clock pulse that I give it. And when uh, so when two is equal to two, when it's when it, the counter is equal to two, and it's, it knows that it's equal to the slope, I guess I should say, because that can change. It's not always going to be two. So when the counter is equal to the slope, it resets the counter back to one, and uh, it comes up here through this mono stable, which then you know controls the counter and resets it to one. Uh, so like you can see that I can clock through it here, and you can see that we have a one here. And if I clock it, now we have a two. If I clock this again, you're going to see it goes to one. Now if I clock it again, it'll go to two, one, two, one, two, one, two, like that. So we're incrementing a counter, seeing that it's equal to two, resetting it to one. Incrementing a counter, seeing that it's equal to two, resetting it to one. It does that over and over and over again. And then basically how this, what this is doing, I'll reset and initialize to zero again. Um, oh, you see, you see how I was drawing a line when I was clocking it. Um, so basically what it does is you say, I have a slope of two and my counter is at one. So I'm going to, and I plotted a point. So now I'll, I'll increment my counter, increment Y and plot a point. Oh, now my counter is equal to two. So I'll increment X, increment Y, plot a point. Now my counter is equal to two, uh, one. Now I plot again, it's equal to two. Two is equal to two, increment over, increment up and do it again. And it just keeps doing that over and over and over again. So you can draw lines using uh, with y equals mx plus b, just literally just using counters, and you could um, you could then draw um, quadratics and stuff like that too, depending on your offset that you add to your slope. So if you wanted to draw, you know, let's say x squared, you would um, you would start off with a slope of something like uh, this, and then midway through. So I shall, I'll do it. Uh, so let's. Uh, Let's uh, reset, we'll do a slope of one, and we'll uh, initialize. I'm gonna slow my speed down to uh, 100. Set, and now we'll start. All right, cool. And now we can change the slope to like, say two. And start. And now we can change the slope to say six. And start. And cool, we can get like a quadratic shape if we wanted to. Oh, I didn't really run too many. Oh, let me try this again. One, two, three. Let's 
seven, I guess. Let's just do this. Yeah. So you could change the slope, and the rate at which you change the slope can get you quadratics or other things that you wanted to draw. And now, if I if I had up counters and down counters, I could have um, uh, a lot more flexibility. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to be working on an up down counter. That uh, actually, I think I I have my counter will easily uh, be turned into an up down counter. I just need an XOR on the output. Um, and then once I have that, then I can do a lot more cool things. But I don't think I'm going to waste my time just drawing lines anymore. I think I'm going to implement full-on Bresenham's algorithm. Um, because I can. Um, but the other thing is, uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Mr. IO, he's working on a 1x1 one one screen instead of a 2x2 two two screen. So I'm really hoping he can get me that. So then a 64x64 64 64 screen um, would be half this width here and the same height. Um, and instead of this being 64 by 32. Um, so he would literally make this the size I wanted in in a quarter, or in half the size, I guess I should say. Um, and then having that increased resolution would be really nice. And especially if it's stackable, then maybe we could have 128 by 128 displays. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy. If you thought this was cool, uh, please give a like and subscribe. If you want a tutorial or anything like that, maybe I will do that. Uh, I can show you how to build... Um, you know, this display and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, um, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.